Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another tutorial. In this lesson, as the title says, we are going to learn how to create a custom cursor image in NetBeans. So instead of having this boring default arrow that's been around since uh, the first version of Windows that had a GUI, we're going to be able to create our own custom PNG image and then use that to replace this default cursor. So that way we can have a nice cursor that matches our GUI for any one of our programs. Now if you remember the last tutorial, I showed you guys how we can create our own custom clock. Currently it's just one minute past nine and I uh, also implemented the undecorated frame drag method so we can move the frame around. So in this GUI we're going to create a custom icon. So I've already created one, um, I actually got Daniil to create one. It's a 25 by 25 PNG. As you can see it's sort of like a feather with two shades of blue, it's light blue and there's a dark blue on the other side. And this uh, PNG will actually be used to replace the default mouse that Windows 7 or Linux or Mac has. So what you first need to do is you need to place this, uh, that, that PNG image or icon or whatever you want to call it, into your project's root folder. Now the root folder is in the main folder and you just put it right here right there so cursor.png as you guys can see 25 by 25 so you guys can create your own in your own spare time or just download a cursor png off the internet it'll only work with png uh, you don't want to use jpeg because you won't have the transparency so anyways now we get to the coding part of things and we just have to code a few lines so we're going to start creating a new method and this method is not going to contain too much of code so let's get started let's just say public void uh, let's just give it a name, something like custom cursor. There you go, now we can start coding. So the first thing we need to do is get the default toolkit that uh, the JDK offers. So we're going to type in toolkit and then just give it a name. So toolkit equals toolkit.getDefaultToolkit. I think that's correct. So this gets the default toolkit that the Java 7, I think, Java 6 or Java 7 offers, I'm not too sure. So once we have the toolkit, we need to actually get our image. So obviously in Java, we use the uh, the class image. So image image, or whatever you want to name it, yeah, uh, let's just name it image img, is equal to toolkit.get image. There we go. And then you just got to specify the file name. So in our case, it was called cursor.png. Oops, png. There you go. And then we obviously have to have the import for the image class. And now, once you have your image, um, you guys can see that our cursor, if you look on the left hand side of your screen, it's quite a big cursor when you think about it, but we only want one point of it to actually work. Like if I try clicking this robo dash with the bottom end of my cursor, it doesn't do that. Instead, it clicks the one above it. Now that's because the point of this tool, uh, not the toolkit, the point of this uh, this cursor is right at point zero comma zero. Now you guys can change this. If you wanted to read the bottom of the PNG or the bottom of the cursor, you can. If you want to read on the left hand side, right hand side, if you want to read in the middle, it doesn't really matter. But by default, Windows, Mac, Linux, Solaris, all those operating systems use point zero zero, which is the very tip of this cursor. So we're going to specify which part of the, which point, uh, which coordinates I should say, we want to use to actually select your, you know, your text fields and whatever you want to do with the cursor. So what we're going to say is we're going to say point, and then we're just going to give it a name. So let's just say point point is equal to new point. And then you specify X and Y coordinates. So I want point zero and zero to be the point that you use to actually click on stuff. Because I mean, it's just not practical to have it as point uh, five comma five, because then it'll be somewhere in the middle of this icon. And we don't really want that. So once we specify the point, we can simply create the custom cursor. So what we're gonna say is, we're gonna say cursor, 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 is equal to toolkit dot create custom oh whoops toolkit dot create custom cursor okay so the first thing that we have to specify is the image the second that we have to specify is the point 
And then the third that we have to specify is just a string. So we're just going to call it cursor and semicolon at the end. And I spelled cursor wrong right here. And then obviously add the import, uh, the import for the cursor. Okay, now once that's done, we are pretty much done. All we have to do is set the cursor. So set cursor now because we're just saying set cursor. What's going to happen is everything by default. So anything that's using the normal cursor will be replaced with our new image. And then we just put in cursor. Now when you run it, nothing will happen because we forgot to implement this method in the constructor. So what happens is as soon as you launch your GUI, it'll automatically run this method right here. So we can put it wherever you like, you know, put it right there. There we go. And this will create our custom cursor. So as you can see, we now have this feather looking cursor. Doesn't match perfectly because of the colors, but you guys can see uh, with a little bit of more, with a little bit more work, you guys can create your own great looking custom cursor and you can see it works quite well. But obviously if you change to the hand cursor or uh, the text cursor, or whatever it may be, it changes your cursor dramatically. So it doesn't match anymore with the theme of your GUI. So what I suggest doing is creating multiple cursor styles, hand cursor, the normal cursor, text cursor, and then using the same method right here to build your cursors. And there you go, you can see we now have a very custom GUI that looks fantastic. And if you move out of your GUI, it switches back to the normal Windows default cursor. So, so anyways, if you guys did like the tutorial, please don't forget to leave us a comment, like, subscribe. If you have any suggestions, please leave it in the comment section below and we'll get back to you. So anyways, guys, I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye.